Hello everyone, I hope you all are fine and doing well. Today I am going to discuss about the PRPs and for those who have not seen my previous video, I am going to describe again what is PRP. So PRPs are the basic requirements that we need to implement throughout the supply chain to maintain food safety. And this is from Technical Specification Standard ISO TS 22002-1. So let's go ahead and today I'm going to describe PRP number 7 which is waste disposal and if any of you have not seen my previous videos please go back to my channel and see them. So let's start with our today's video which is waste disposal. So in the waste disposal there are total 4 sub clauses general requirement container for waste and in the inedible or hazardous substances waste management and removal and fourth is drains and drainage. So I will discuss them one by one. So first is general requirement. So general requirement as usual is a summary of all three other requirements. If you comply with these three requirements, you will automatically be comply with general requirement. So I will directly jump to the 7.2 clause, which is containers for waste and inedible or hazardous substances. I'm not going to read it. Rather, I have made some points for you to understand it easily. So what you need to do I have described some points for the waste management for inside premises and outside uh, waste management. So what you need to keep in mind that the waste bin that you are using inside should be foot operated. Then second is should have a bin liner. Third is it should have a lid covered. Then you need to label it like I have mentioned here paper waste. So if you are only disposing paper waste in this bin mention it. And if you are using it for food waste, mention food waste. And then that material should be impervious material. Impervious means here the material that should not react or react with the material that we are putting inside. And same things for the outside. Just you need uh, do not need bin liner outside. If you can arrange, then it is fine. Otherwise, it is not mandatory. Another point that you need to keep in mind while implementation of this clause that there should be a designated area for the placement of bin. So what does mean by designated area? For example, this bin is for disposal of PPEs for the face mask. Do you need to mention it on the wall as well? There, as you can see in the picture, and mention it on the bin as well. So this is known as designated area. You have designated specific area for the placement of bins. You can also use color coding as well if you want. Like it's red bin, you can mention. You can uh, mark it on the floor and the wall uh, with the red. Or even on the floor it is would be, would be fine but if you are going to have a color coding then it must be part of your SOP you have to define which what is mean by which color so the second point is lockable bin so the, this is also a requirement of clause uh, that your waste bin should be lockable only for those material that where you have danger that someone can misuse it so it should be lockable or the other solution is you can use a room which is locked and you can place those bins danger waste inside that either ways you will you are complying the clause so this is all about 7.2 clause now i will describe about the 7.3 which is waste management and removal for the waste management and removal you need to follow below points first is designated area as i described before so the second is defined frequency in your waste procedure in the standard it is mentioned that minimum once a day this should be removed from inside the premises so there is no compromise on it you have to mention the frequency daily from inside the premises and second outside the premises what you need to do here you need to notice that after how, how much time your waste bins became full with waste and you have to define the frequency accordingly for example your main waste area became full with waste after 15 days so you have to define you are removing waste from waste area after every 15 days to avoid overflow of waste in that area third is destroy or disfigure the labeling for example the product is nestle bottle and if you did not disfigure the label on it then there are chances that someone else can use that portal for some other purposes so you have to disfigure or destroy that label so that it cannot be reused and then fourth is a signed contract so if you are using a waste vendor then you must have a signed contract with the vendor and that contract should include 
food safety clauses. So what are the clauses? It depends on the type of food or your processing activities. So for example, if your vendor only handle the waste outside the premises, then maybe in that case, you do not need so much requirements. But if that vendor will going in, inside your premises and picking the waste, then in that case, he should have medical certificate. He should be trained on hygiene requirement, basic hygiene requirements on the areas where he is going. And third is training record on waste handling so these three minimum requirements should be comply and if you think there are more according to your procedure or your premises you can add them but these are the minimum so this is all about clause 7.3 now i will describe about clause number 7.4 which is the last clause of this which is the last sub clause of this prp so 7.4 is drains and drainage F comply with this requirement you have to follow below points the first is main drainage area is not overflowing and should be covered then second is the drains lines should not be passing over the processing lines like uh, mixing area or, or any storage area. Then third is make marking of drains. This is just my opinion or recommendation. This is not required by standard. If you want to, if you want to have a color or labeling of your drain system, then you can. If you don't want, don't do this. This is just a best practice. Then fourth is drains lines. So drain lines should not be chalked. So you have to ensure that, for example, if you are using any fat material in your processing area and then you are draining into drains. For example, in case of kitchen, you are using fat and oils and when temperature is low, there are chances that fat will be solidify in the lines and that and these will be chalked, which result into bad flow. So you have to find a way to avoid solidification of fat then fifth is leakage so there should not be leakage or dripping in the line drain lines then sixth is there should not be bad smell sometimes it happened that near the kitchen or sink you usually have false smell so you have to avoid this and then seventh is drainage cleaning you have to clean the drainage as per cleaning schedule and you have to mention that how you will clean i will describe it in detail in the clause cleaning and sanitation and the last is drain should be covered inside the premises as well to avoid test. so this is all about clause number seven i will share the next clause which is clause eight in my next video so, so hit like and subscribe my channel and keep watching thank you